Hi, in this episode, we're talking about the five reasons I love fishing with my wife. First of all, she's the eye candy. I've got lots of fishing buddies, uh, but none of them bring me as much just joy and delight uh, when fishing as having my wife along on the boat. Two, I've learned that taking my wife fishing helps in that she doesn't ask me to fish less often. She doesn't come with me all the time. I mean, she might come fishing with me five or 10 times a year, but I fish 80 or 100 times a year. And by taking her with me, she kind of understands why I go fishing, how I go fishing, what's going on out there, and she doesn't end up asking me to fish any less. Three, she doesn't ask me to spend less money fishing. By coming along with me, she can see that I really do need, at least for the fishing goals that I have, uh, the kind of boat and the equipment that I'm using. And then I'm on the frugal side. There is a redeemer, Jesus, God's own son, precious lamb of God, Messiah, holy one. Right? Uh, most of the boats we see out there when we're fishing are bigger and a lot more expensive than mine. I uh, finally saw one boat fishing yesterday for the first time in some time that was more humble than mine. Four, by taking my wife fishing, she's more willing to cook my fish for me. She kind of gets a greater appreciation for how hard the fish are to come by and the satisfaction of, of catching the fish, bringing the fish home, cleaning the fish, eating the fish. It makes more sense to her and she kind of has less of this thought that a lot of women can have that, boy, those fish would be a lot cheaper if you just bought them at Walmart <laughs> because, you know, she sees the farm-raised catfish and the tilapia. So that's a temptation women have. Five. She's more supportive of my fishing buddies. She, she sort of has this idea. She can picture it in her mind because she comes with me every once in a while. She can picture in her mind what we're doing out there, what we're talking about, how we're trying to relax, how we're trying to support and encourage each other. And this sort of spills over. It's like my fishing buddies, she, she, her heart grows toward my fishing buddies and she cares about them and she prays for them and she wants them to be blessed and to succeed. So by taking her out there a few times a year, uh, you know, when I get home, she's eager to hear, hey, how many fish did you catch? Did you bring any home? Did your buddies have fun? She, her heart is really in my fishing adventures. And I think uh, taking her fishing several times a year. Now, let me get on this thing that I hate too, because uh, some, some of my other buddies have this phrase, it's called de-wifing the boat. And their idea is that, well, you got to keep your wife off the boat or she'll rob all the fun and all the light of it because she'll always want to come along. So they say, okay, sometime early in the year, pick a windy day, seat her in the front of the boat, run the boat too fast and make sure the waves kind of beat her up and make sure she has a lot to drink and, you know, needs to pee, but she can't make it back to the bathroom, so she really has to hold it. So this idea that de-wifing the boat, the goal is to make for an uncomfortable fishing trip for your wife so that, uh, so that she stays at home and let, lets you have your fishing thing. Seems like the dumbest idea ever to me. I mean, um, my wife is a, is a precious gift from the Lord. The Bible says, he who finds a wife finds what is good and receives favor from the Lord. And that's certainly been true in my case. So if you're inclined to, you know, de-wife your boat or always leave your wife at home, may I gently submit to you that, that maybe you're doing it wrong. Take another look in the good, good book. Don't let it pass you by. Let the Holy Spirit talk. Walk through the written word of Jesus. Take another look in the good, good book. Don't let it pass you by. Let the Holy Spirit talk. Walk through the written word.